Since around 2022, the game has been gradually achieving better balance, not just for the top weapon, but for all eight tier guns. To accommodate this, we expanded our list from the top 10 to the top 15. We carefully reordered the list to enhance its logical flow, considering the additional space we now have. Don't worry, we'll keep it short. As always, at the last spot, we have the SKS, the XPR, and the new kid on the block, the AS Valve with the FMJ mag. The XPR is a semi-auto sniper with 32 meters of one shot in the chest, arms, or head, and after that, it can still one shot in the chest and head, and two shot anywhere else. It is good for both aggressive sniping and holding lanes at long range thanks to that. The SKS and the AS Val FMJ, on the other hand, are two shot kill weapons. The SKS can two shot as long as you're not hitting the legs and the upper arms, and for the AS Val, it's the same but only up to 43 meters. You might think, why would I use the AS Val FMJ then? Because unlike the SKS, it's super quick and can be used as sort of an aggressive SKS, so you might want to give it a try. At number 14, we have the PP-19 Bison and the Grau. I'm not gonna elaborate much on these two. They are two beginner-friendly weapons by excellence, and if you're feeling tired or if you're new at the game, these are the two weapons you should go for. At number 13, we have the M13. It's a great assault rifle with fast fire rate, large mag, clean iron sight with little to no aim shake, and decent mobility. It is really close in terms of performances to some more common ARs, like the Kilo and the Krig in its first range, which goes up to 26 meters. And the fact that it has a fast fire rate makes it less punishing when you miss a few shots. Definitely a good gun to try if you're not feeling that comfortable with the usual ARs. Next up, we got the three flex ARs at number 12, the Peacekeeper, the T-19, and the AK-117. Simply put, they are all close to the ground but with much better range. The T-19 is literally a ground on steroids, the AK-117 is a ground on steroids but with a random recoil pattern, and the Peacekeeper is also a ground on steroids but with a hard to control recoil pattern. Each of them has its strengths and downsides, but trying out all three will probably make you decide which one you prefer. Side note, the Peacekeeper has a huge damage drop after 35 meters, and beyond that, taking a gunfight is probably not gonna end well. At number 11, again, we have three weapons, but this time it's the passive weapons, the KN-44, the M16, and the UL-736. You might be thinking, where's the LK-24? Well, since the KN-44 recoil buff, the LK-24 is just a worse KN-44 on everything, so there's no point on mentioning it, although it's not a bad gun at all. To summarize quickly, the KN-44 can 4-shot up to 58 meters, and 3-shot up to 38 meters if you can get a headshot. The M16 can get a 4-shot kill up to 50 meters, with all shots ending in the legs, and the UL-736 can 4-shot up to 59 meters, and 3-shot if you can hit all your shots in the chest, arms or head up to 42 meters. Mobility for these these three is disastrous, and you don't want to engage in a fight without being already ADS. The M16 has a really bad iron sight and quite a lot of aim shake, and we can't really put a red dot without throwing off anything useful apart from the mag, so if you don't have a good skin, I'd suggest you to use one of the other two guns. At number 10, we have again three weapons, and it's the three LMGs the Hades, the Holger, and the Bruin MK9. They're all really close in terms of stats, just pick the one you prefer and you'll be good. The Holger and the Hades both have 24 meters of 4 shot kill range, and beyond that, they'll kill within 5 shots. But the Hades has a slightly better overall mobility, while the Holger has the larger mag and a slot available for a red dot. The Bruin MK9, which just got buffed, got 29 meters of 4 shot kill, and after that, it also kills within 5 shots. It has a smaller mag than both the Hades and the Holger, but it shines thanks to a really low recoil and an even better mobility. For a comparison, when the Holger was really good in 2022 before it got super hardly nerfed, it had similar stats to the current Bruin, just with a larger mag and a crazy fast strafe. At number 9, we got the Kilo and the Krig. Reliable 4 shot kill ARs with a 3 shot potential if you can hit the head and the chest once in the first range for the Kilo, and if you can hit the head once in the first range for the Krig. They both have about 32 meters of 4 shot kills, and then they will kill within 5 shots. They're super close in terms of stats, so try both to see which one you prefer. But if you have the Mythic Krig, it's definitely better than the Kilo. If you don't, then they're both equal if you're okay with the Krig aim shake. 
For the next three, I'm not gonna elaborate much since we made a video comparing them. At number eight, we have the Man of War, solid long range AR, and for more details, go check out our three tap comparison. At number 7, we got the AK-47 and the DRH, which just got nerfed and lost its ability to two-tap in the head, which we believe deserves to make it drop below the EM-2. And at number 6, we got the EM-2, which is the go-to three-tap you should use. Into the top 5, we have the Fennec and the CX-9. They are the go-to CQC SMGs, fast fire rate, low recoil for the CX-9, which makes it easier to exploit, and high recoil for the Fennec, which makes it harder to exploit, but it has better damages in the second range, which compensates for it a bit. They are good as long as you use them under the 20 meter mark. After that, you won't be able to compete at all, so use them wisely and don't use them on every map because they aren't meant to be used on this map, for example, as you can see. At number 4, we have two weapons that weren't necessarily bad, but which are really good now that they got buffed, and those two are the QXR with Enhanced Bolt and the OTS-9. They were pretty much QQ-9 alternatives, which just got dumped out of the list because these two appeared by the way. The OTS-9 post-buff can now foreshot up to 22 meters consistently as long as you don't hit the legs, which is really nice, and the QXR EB can now 5-shot up to 30 meters, which gives us 240 milliseconds of time to kill because it has 1000 RP. PM. And as if the QXR wasn't good enough, it can kill consistently within 4 shots in the first range, which goes up to 11 meters as long as you don't hit the leg. The MX-9, which also got buffed, can be used, but it's not as good as these two, so we didn't put it in the list. But it deserves a little mention since it has been F tier since it got nerfed in 2021. At number 3, since we got a top 15, we can mention it properly, we have the QQ-9 10mm. It is perhaps the most underestimated gun in the game right now. The QQ-9 got thrown out of the list because it was just the worst OTS-9, but the QQ-10, as we call it, is incredible. It has 24 meters of 4-shot kill, and it can kill within 3 shots in the first range if you're capable of hitting the head or the chest. It's a high-skill, high-reward SMG, and you can think of it as the HVK-30 for SMGs. And by HVK-30 of SMGs, I mean that it also has the downsides of the HPK-30, which is a small mag and a slow reload speed. So it's definitely not suited well for respawn, but for SND and CDM on small maps, you definitely want to try this one out. At number 2, we got the 3 aggro flex weapons, which are the CBR4 of our era, the PDW, the FFAR, and the QXR without enhanced bolt. And now, you're wondering why I'm mentioning the QXR twice. It's because the enhanced bolt perk not only boosts the fire rate of the QXR, but it also reduces the BSA a lot. And it's not an issue for aggressive SMG playstyle, but for more of a mid-range approach, not using the EB perk is actually a good idea. And with that, the QXR has 34 meters of 5-shot kill range and 14 meters of 4-shot kill, which makes it a PDW but better for close range and still decent at mid-range. The PDW on the other hand, still good as usual, 26 meters of 4-shot kill, a strafe so fast that enemies will not be able to shoot you, and pretty much no recoil. And the FFAR, the AR that thinks it's an SMG, 24 meters of 5 shot kill, paired with no recoil for the first 7 shots, which makes it viable at long range if you don't spray for long durations, and thanks to its fast fire rate, it's pretty easy to use in close range. And lastly, the number one gun this season, the HVK-30. It has been in that exact state since January 2023, the best 3 tap weapon in the game right now. 28 meters of 4-shot kill consistent, infinite 5-shot kill, a good mobility, BSA, fire rate, flinch. And one headshot reduces the shot to kill by one at all ranges. And in the first range, which goes up to 18 meters, you can easily get a 3-shot kill. What's your go-to gun this season? Let us know down in the comments below. If you feel like your aim isn't that good, something might be wrong with your settings. You can check out my settings that gave me good aim right here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.